My name is Jack Clunan. I'm a former member of the Bin Laden squad for the New York office of the FBI. I spent 27 years in the FBI and from 1996 to October 2002 when I retired I was seconded to a special team that was targeted against Bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. When you're speaking to members of Al-Qaeda you have to assume a position of being humble in that you are not going to argue with them or convince them to talk to you based on your understanding of what religion means and based on your understanding of what Al-Qaeda is all about. But at all times you have to come across as human, as sympathetic, as empathetic, and to build that rapport. Because ultimately what are you asking that person to do? You're asking that person to become an apostate. And their lexicon means you're asking them to become a traitor. So if, for example, I understood in a very innocent way that they were concerned about their family. Could I provide some security for their family? The answer is yes. Could I, in fact, move their families from places they were at to other places? Yes. Would I provide those families with immigration status? The answer is yes. But remember, all of, at every point, it's incumbent upon the person sitting there, the person that I'm interviewing, that they have an obligation to me. They begin to see you as ultimately their problem solver. When I tell you that I had people in safe houses for two and three years, that's not an exaggeration. Because at three o'clock in the morning, when somebody's having a pain of conscience, when they've reached the precipice, when they are now going to become an apostate and a traitor to the cause, who needs to be there? You do. Have I seen members of Al-Qaeda cry? The answer is yes. Have I seen members of Al-Qaeda joke? Of course I have. Have I seen members of Al-Qaeda want to gamble? Yes. Have I seen members of Al-Qaeda, uh, have I taught them how to swim in the ocean? The answer is yes. Can you imagine a picture of a member from Al-Qaeda who has blood on their hands, not knowing how to swim, and here we are, the FBI, wrapping them in noodles and having them float along the, in, in the waves? Do you know that the United States government got a member from Al-Qaeda's son who was born in our custody? A heart transfer, transplant? $850,000. I think the toughest nut for me to crack um, was a, a, a fellow by the name of Ali Abdel Saud Mohammed. And he was the toughest nut to crack because he understood um, not because he watched Law and Order or NYPD Blue. By the way, somebody did tell me that, the guys from Al-Qaeda. They loved NYPD Blue. And, uh, you know, Sipowitz, they knew about Sipowitz, the good cop, bad cop. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, but Ali was good because he was intellectually um, a real challenge. He could spin a story that you would sit there, and I'm sure he sat and looked at us and said, well, I got them now, you know, because you're sitting there, really? I'm writing all this stuff down, you know? And <clears throat> I think he had us spinning our wheels for the better part of a year. But again, what got him over the edge uh, was a, a, a day I remember very vividly um, when it looked as though we had all reached our wit's end. And uh, I remember saying to him, um, would you like to speak to your sister? And his sister lived in uh, Egypt. And uh, he said, you would do that for me? I said, yes. Yeah. So we arranged a telephone call to his sister, and it was being monitored, I remember. As soon as he heard his sister's voice on the phone, it's the only time I ever saw Ali cry. And, you know, do I feel sorry for him? Not for what he did. Did I take advantage of that? You better believe it.